There we go. All right, thank you. Um, so um, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this Four Returns community of practice session today about um, sort of expanding our horizon or expanding our understanding of restoration beyond planting trees, basically. So what we're seeing globally is that more and more organizations, governments, um, businesses want to engage in planting trees. So you can, for example, on Ecosia, you can every search, uh, they promise to plant a tree. And of course, uh, the story is a bit more complicated than that. So we're not saying that not every organization is aware of the more complexity of restoration. But what we're trying to do today is yeah, getting an understanding of that and how it plays out, for example, in Spain. Um, and we have Fernando here, uh, who is uh, who's about to go on holiday. So I'm really grateful that he's taking time to share his insights with us because he's had years of experience working with Alvalal in a, quite a challenging um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, ecology, ecological situation in southeast uh, of Spain. So um, you'll hear more about that. Before we get started, I wanted to just slowly ease us in uh, for, first of all, for example, by welcoming you, and I'm really grateful that there are also people here uh, new to the network. So this is a monthly for returns community of practice session where we're trying to organize yeah, content oriented sessions about anything connected to holistic landscape restoration. So it could be about business development, planting trees like today, but it could also be about mobilizing farmers and communities. So the topics are really uh, a wide range. Um, and um, yeah, in response to also uh, Fernando's experience and having, uh, yeah, having prepared uh, his thoughts on this, we thought it might be nice to, yeah, host a session on it because uh, there is a need for us to think about how to plant the right tree in the right place for the right reasons. And sometimes the conclusion can also be tree planting is not fit for this area, uh, but we'll go into that later. Um, so before that, um, er Erica actually shared two articles that I've read in pre preparation for this session. And I just pulled out some highlights that I thought might be interesting just to get into the headspace. Um, so if you talk about um, yeah, tree planting or bringing back uh, uh, forests uh, to an, uh, a healthy state, uh, what, I, what I understood is that it's also really important to let natural regeneration of trees and other types of vegetation occur. So that can also be uh, assisted natural revegetation as it's called. Um, you just also yeah see what the system needs and then let it regenerate by itself but with with minimal uh, uh, interaction uh, it's also important to engage with locals about the historical prevalence of plants and trees and what they would like to see come back so often the knowledge of the ecosystem is also in the heads and, and history and memories of people living there so that also includes the benefits of let's say indigenous vegetation so getting an understanding of the interaction of humans and, and their ecology secure land tenure can also be a very good uh, road forward in, in su supporting the longevity of your effort, because if you have secure land rights or clarity on land um, uh, ownership, it can also benefit the, yeah, the, the, the project you've, you've engaged in. Um, and also shifting from a carbon capture focus, which is often the case when we talk about tree planting, it's good for capturing carbon, uh, but actually shifting that towards a more a larger perspective of ecosystem health and viewing forests actually as a biodiversity reservoir. Um, uh, it's also about not automatically reverting to monoculture, fast growing eucalypt or pine trees plantations, for example. Uh, uh, of course, there will be forest plantations, but can we make those more uh, fit for the landscape and the biodiverse? Um, Somebody, yeah. Um, so refrain from establishing forests where they naturally don't belong, grasslands, savanna, peatlands. It doesn't make a lot of sense to plant forests where they, they don't naturally belong. Uh, avoid perverse incentives to cut down existing forests in order to plant new trees. So ironically, that, that is also happening now. Um, also consider how seedlings planted today might fare over the next several decades. So this long-term life of a tree, how, how will it grow uh, considering the ecosystem it's in? And before you start, make sure that the trees are planted in the right place because not all ecosystems on land can or should support trees. Like I said before, the, the peat, grassland, savanna. Um, so the articles were from Bonnie Waring in the conservation, so a conversation online and from Shreya Dasgupta on Manga Bay. I can share them later. And I think um, Fernando also has some great articles to share. Um, so this was just a, a quick download of what, what we've read on this, uh, but uh, Fernando will give a, a way more colorful um, explanation of, of uh, what we need to think about 
in this context. So the floor is yours, Fernando. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm going to try my best because it's a very complex uh, concept and uh, understanding. But uh, for sure, uh, with the cooperation of, uh, of all, uh, we are going to to reach uh, to clarify this uh, this situation and this uh, uh, problematic uh, situation. I am going to share my screen. Let me know if you see it. Uh, here it is, uh, the slideshow. Yeah. Can uh, you make it full screen? Yeah, perfect. I am going to, at the moment you, you can see it. Please yeah. let no perfect okay well i have to to say that is a, a briefing of a previous uh, presentation we made with uh, a compound of uh, potential donors because uh, what we have there detect uh, is uh, this kind of uh, if you permit it between columns uh, obviously uh, both of uh, planting uh, trees uh, are reducing our possibilities of uh, larger scale ecosystem restoration. Then uh, we tried uh, to explain them as well, the, the same uh, concept and uh, perspective that uh, today I'm going to, to try with you. Then well, uh, what we want uh, to do is uh, to um, provoke a real transformation of the degraded areas, especially focusing in using the, the soil as uh, the second biggest uh, CO2 sink to give uh, a chance uh, to, to improving of biodiversity and uh, to promote a healthy lands, uh, landscape. Uh, then I'm going to, to focus in the natural zone restoration plan that uh, we have developed uh, for uh, Alvelar territory uh, and uh, finishing with uh, our perspective for 2050, which uh, we have called the dream of uh, Alvelar, and I think it's uh, quite a didactic uh, a video uh, show. Then uh, Alvelal is, uh, is that, it's a compound of uh, shires uh, in the provinces of uh, Almeria, Murcia and uh, Granada uh, of uh, around uh, 1 million hectares, uh, cold uh, semi-arid steppe uh, uh, environment with a high uh, biodiversity of uh, profiles and uh, altitudes uh, since the, the 3,000 meters above the sea level and Till the low valley is uh, around uh, uh, 500, uh, 400 meters above the sea level, uh, with a, a population of uh, 2,100 uh, inhabitants, especially uh, or an economically based in agriculture, uh, livestock, and less forestry, and uh, uh, where a promotion because of the the price in the the global market of the almonds. Uh, is growing the, the monoculture uh, and the monoculture of almond trees. Where we can find uh, uh, natural parts, uh, four of them, uh, public lands, uh, and uh, that is uh, in a, in a, a legal uh, form of association, but nowadays uh, has reached uh, 350 uh, partners, members. Uh, our network is uh, a compound of uh, international and national uh, institutions. Uh, where Comalang is our uh, main uh, uh, partners and the most uh, important, and the rest uh, make uh, punctual uh, cooperation, but also very important for our uh, to reach uh, our aims. Our experience uh, until now. Uh, since uh, we can uh, we can count since uh, 2017 uh, is the development of three projects in uh, public lands that uh, is going to be uh, enlarged uh, in 2021 with uh, three new public lands uh, act uh, 11 projects in private farms uh, 137 hectares with uh, restorative actions uh, one 140,000 trees uh, and uh, shrubs planted, 
2,100 seats uh, sown by, by drone and uh, part of them by manpower because of the size and the, uh, the shape of the seats, 60 kilometers of hedges and 190 ponds to uh, improve the water catchment because we have a very high uh, 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 index of uh, torrential uh, rains and uh, the nature of, uh, of the soil in many of our uh, territory uh, offer a very uh, low infiltration rate. Uh, a couple of uh, big reaches of uh, what the things we approach uh, to try to restore uh, ecosystem are uh, well done is uh, that we have uh, reached and got these two certification, the BCA uh, status uh, gold voluntary certified areas by EarthMind and uh, that certification by Prefer uh, by Nature that is the first uh, restoration project in Spain that reached this, uh, this certification. We are very proud of uh, that uh, because uh, it's a way of backup our criteria and uh, our uh, skyline for 2020 or for, uh, sorry, for 2050 or so. Well, what we do or what we want to do is to create a large uh, green corridor that connect the uh, invertebrate the territory, uh, improve biodiversity, but uh, putting uh, effort, especially in uh, restoring, uh, restoring ecosystem with the main aim of protecting soil. Then we consider uh, uh, protection and improvement of biodiversity, action of uh, uh, water catchment, and uh, uh, reduce erosion. Even being a natural process, uh, reduce those uh, management that uh, enlarge this uh, this process. Uh, enrich the soils with organic matter as the main uh, source of uh, food for the microorganisms uh, in the soil and all of them in a compound of uh, integrated ecosystem restoration. The location for those that uh, didn't know yet uh, the location of uh, Albalalis is that within the uh, Iberian Peninsula in the south is and surrounded by uh, high mountains uh, like uh, Sierra de Baza, Sierra Nevada, uh, Cazor, Las Segura, Las Villas, Castril, and uh, the range of uh, Sierra Maria, Los Vélez, and Filabres. This uh, avoid the rains uh, reaching from the Atlantic Ocean, that is the main source of rain in the, in the Iberian Peninsula, but also uh, provoking that uh, the rain from the, the Mediterranean seas uh, arrive in a torrential way, okay? That is uh, due for the foin effect uh, that you surely uh, know. And this is uh, something that uh, you are uh, conscious when you visit the territory and you see the clouds hanging in the, in the mountains and never reach the, the central area. This is what uh, uh, is called uh, a shadow area for rains, okay? Uh, obviously, after that, after our geographical location, what we have done is uh, make uh, a mapping of uh, potential uh, areas to be restored, uh, considering natural parts, uh, public estates, uh, private estates, partners of uh, Albelal, and uh, every area inside the, uh, the 2000 uh, nature net of the European Union. This is the, the corridor, this uh, red line is the corridor we want to, to create. If you see in the north east of the territory, we have a, a very uh, uh, well preserved uh, green areas. And we want to connect with uh, uh, private uh, estates and natural parks uh, and uh, public estates going through the southwest and in the future, if we can uh, keep this uh, effort, connect from the south to the north, the natural park of Sierra de Baza and the, the massif of uh, Cazorla, Segura, Las Villas and, and Castril, which is the biggest natural park in, in Spain. 
what is that? Uh, well, you know, that is uh, the time of uh, uh, the LG TV uh, proud, that is not uh, related with that. And something is uh, also a proud of uh, for me. This colorful map is uh, uh, a map of potential vegetation series. That colors offer uh, the heterogeneity that we have in our territory about uh, vegetal communities, uh, vegetal evolution, and the differences uh, in uh, in uh, uh, forest potential forest. That means all this territory should be covered by forest. No, that means that we have a compound of conditions uh, attending to the uh, pH of the soil, rain, temperatures, uh, uh, sun exposition that can give us different forests. And this potential different forests are followed by a community, an impressive community of uh, uh, vegetal species that modify the soil conditions, prepare the soil conditions to reach the next step, okay? Only for, uh, to give you an example, only in this massive, in these mountains, only in these mountains, Castril, Cazorla, Segura, and Las Villas, we have more than 2,500 uh, different vegetal species, which means that 25% of the total vegetal biodiversity in the in the Iberian Peninsula, that is uh, something big. If you also mm, join the uh, a specific condition in this area, which is uh, Olla de Guadix and Olla de Baza, the number of species that uh, you need, many of them autochthonous and uh, endemic endemisms of this area, uh, go above uh, four hundred different uh, species which is something crazy for such a, a small territory, a small, small between columns as well. Obviously, uh, if you permit me, I am going to uh, share with you a, a video uh, show explaining uh, the uh, importance of considering this vegetation successional uh, series. Mm -hmm. Is in English, subtitle in English. Um, Fernando, we don't hear sound. Uh, Sorry? So maybe if you, uh, I have a trick. So when you, uh, reshare so stop sharing and resharing and it's it, you need to tick a box which says share sound and then we can also hear the sound even though it's in uh, spanish so um if you stop sharing and resharing uh, stop sharing stop sharing then reshare and then you see a screen which uh, and then on the left lower corner you see share sound a little box basic uh, advanced compartir sonido so, so on, when you sh click share, then you get a, a share sound on the lower left corner. Okay. You see? Yeah. Perfect. Maybe now better, hopefully. Yeah. La vegetación presente en un determinado territorio va a estar condicionada por numerosos factores como el tipo de suelo, el pH del mismo, la cantidad de lluvia o la temperatura dominante y otros factores secundarios como la exposición e inclinación de las laderas montañosas. La vegetación es un elemento dinámico que cambia en función de las condiciones del suelo y los agentes erosivos, que pueden ser seres vivos o agentes no vivos como el agua, el viento o el hielo. Como resultado de este dinamismo y la adaptación a las condiciones cambiantes, van apareciendo formaciones vegetales constituidas, cada una de ellas, por una comunidad de especies propias. El concepto de bosque es bastante ambiguo. La mayoría de nosotros lo relacionamos solo con el estado arbóreo de la vegetación. Espacios naturales con grandes árboles, como abedules, castaños, hayas... Son los bosques eurosiberianos, 
que se dan en lugares en los que no existe periodo de sequía a lo largo del año y que se producen como resultado de la evolución de las distintas comunidades vegetales, hasta obtener esos grandes árboles que todos dibujamos en nuestra imaginación, como pueden ser robles, abedules, hayas, abeto o piceas, según la temperatura. Sin embargo, las comunidades previas a esos grandes bosques como retamares, coscojares, lentiscares o jarales, tienen la misma importancia para la biodiversidad, la protección contra la erosión y el enriquecimiento de las condiciones edáficas que habitualmente se le otorgan al estrato arbóreo de la vegetación, es decir, a esos grandes bosques que todos imaginamos. Esta especie la encontramos en zonas condicionadas por un periodo anual de sequía como el altiplano estepario en el sudeste de España donde encontramos el bosque mediterráneo. Un bosque rico en biodiversidad con especies de matorral acompañadas de especies arbóreas muy concretas y adaptadas a estas condiciones, como son las sabinas, encinas, quejigos o pinos carrascos. Ambos ejemplos son bosques, ecosistemas ricos en biodiversidad, refugio y fuente de alimento de un gran número de seres vivos. Okay, stop sharing. Sharing again. And, mm. Continue with the presentation. Perfect, yeah, thanks. Okay, what is uh, uh, then important to us? Well, uh, make a geographical location, understand uh, the potential uh, vegetation, understand the climate conditions, and uh, select potential areas. The next step is that, is to, to detect in the potential uh, areas to act, a selection of the different ecosystems, for example, that. That is uh, what we call Sabina. It's a uh, community compound specifically or, or uh, mainly by uh, Juniperus foenicia. This uh, community, these uh, big bushes, not uh, the size of uh, trees and very slow uh, growing, occupy this kind of soil. Hard uh, soils with uh, uh, limestones where the big trees like Aleppo pine tree or oak, all oak trees only can grow in the best, best uh, um, gaps of uh, soil. This is the maximum evolution of uh, the vegetation and is a, a community very rich in, in biodiversity, especially, uh, especially in the grass uh, uh, community and uh, a small bushes uh, community. That is a stupid consider a plantation of, uh, of uh, trees in this area, but we can do many things to enlarge uh, biodiversity. Another ecosystem uh, uh, selected or, or detected in our area is that is uh, an open oak tree forest, uh, which is called the ESA. It's uh, one of the systems that we have uh, heritage from the Roman Empire. It's an open forest of, uh, of all oak trees that was used to uh, put inside uh, the different species of uh, cattle, pigs, and, and sheep. Another ecosystem very rich in, uh, in biodiversity. Because it's uh, promoted the forest uh, uh, layer or stratus and the bush layer of uh, the vegetation. Sorry. If you see in the upper part of the mountain the slope, we only have uh, a, a scatter uh, present of uh, all oak trees and very rich in uh, in asparto grass. Asparto grass is uh, in our territory very important to reduce erosion in the bare uh, in the bare areas. Then from this line of trees until the upper part, just uh, uh, at the bottom of the cliffs. What we can do is improve under a plantation 
with uh, uh, surgical techniques of uh, making holes of uh, new, uh, on new, new trees that can be Aleppo pine trees spread or uh, all oak trees, but without altering the uh, structure of the, uh, of the soil. That is another example of uh, ecosystem. That is a high mountain bush community with uh, uh, half moon uh, or rounded shaped uh, bushes, Ormatophila spinosa, Irinacea antilis, Ormatophila reverchoni, a compound of autochthonous species and endemic uh, species of, uh, of this uh, area. But if we go uh, in a deeper analysis of uh, this image, we can see this, uh, this tree, that that tree is an a, a individual of Juniperus turifera with more than 1,000 years old. Nowadays it's alone. Why? Because uh, the wood of this kind of uh, tree have been used uh, since uh, uh, many times ago as the best uh, building material for the roofs of the of the cottages because uh, never uh, is affected by funguses. In the upper part, we also find uh, uh, almond oak trees because it's the most the, the less accessible area in all this uh, patch of land. You have to consider that this uh, uh, public currently public uh, estate was until the 60s, a private estate used to crop uh, cereals. Look at that, the evolution of the vegetation in this uh, gap of time. Nowadays, what we have done here is uh, promote the restoration of fat population of Juniperus uh, turifera, because as, as uh, you uh, know, these species separate males and females. This individual is a female, and at the, as he uh, she is uh, alone, she couldn't produce fertile uh, seeds. And what we want with this plantation of uh, Juniperus turifera in the surroundings is to keep the genetic uh, heritage and to try to uh, produce new fertile seeds in the coming years. Another uh, species of uh, trees we have uh, used is uh, Austrian pine tree, that is autochthonous of these uh, high um, uh, limestone mountains. And in the gaps of uh, uh, higher humidity, like this uh, green patch in the right area, we have used uh, white uh, hawthorn, Crataegus monogina, and uh, wild roses like Rosa Pauthini and Rosa uh, Canina. In some areas with uh, appropriate uh, soil, we uh, have also planted uh, almond oak trees that at, are very important for the production of acorn at the end of the, at the beginning of the autumn, the end of the, the summer. Only planting trees and only uh, with uh, uh, not proper uh, criteria, what offer is that, that kind of uh, formation. Uh, at the beginning of the last uh, century, uh, Enrique Macay Monteverde and Ricardo Codorniu, uh, a couple of uh, forest engineers, very important in the, in the restoration of the southeast of the Iberian Peninsula, what approach was use the forest uh, land, the natural lands, to be productive since a timber work uh, perspective, to extract the wood that in that uh, uh, time was very important to uh, as a building material. And uh, they promote plantations of uh, pine trees in uh, Sierra de Espuña, Sierra de, de Cazorla, Segura, Las Villas, Castril, Sierra de Baza, and Sierra de Maria. Currently, I don't pretend to, uh, I don't uh, want to make a judgment of these works because these works were uh, very important to protect uh, the soil, to protect the, the mountains 
and also to protect the dwellers of some uh, villages. I live in a mountain village called Cazorla uh, that until this moment um, falling uh, rocks hitting in the, directly in the village and even killing uh, people. These works were in that moment very uh, appropriated. What uh, happened is now with the, the, the current knowledge we have of uh, ecologic dynamic and uh, soil protection and with the challenge of uh, CO2 absorption we have uh, facing, us, uh, facing us should be improved. As you can see below these, uh, these trees uh, don't grow anything, neither uh, grass or, or bushes. As the, the pine trees uh, don't offer any other food that uh, uh, pine seeds that only can be used by a, com a small compound of uh, animal species, all the herbivores that uh, uh, cross this uh, public land pay attention or focus their, uh, their attention in the, in the most palatable and uh, 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 delicious for them uh, plants. You can see the, the square uh, in the right corner is a, a null oak tree totally uh, uh, affected by uh, herbivorism. Then this kind of formation also being a monocultive uh, uh, plantation promote uh, the proliferation of uh, some plagues like uh, Taumetopoea pitiocampa, processionaria, a processionary uh, caterpillar, and also increase the risk of uh, forest fire because of uh, the high uh, connectivity of the canopy. Then what we approach is a, an integral uh, action uh, making uh, a progressive and uh, selective uh, clarify of this forest to promote the growing of, uh, of the bushes and the, the lower layer of uh, vegetation, create uh, selective uh, exclusion fences to protect uh, and uh, to facilitate the, the development of the vegetation in uh, small patches, improve the content of uh, organic uh, matter in the soil, chipping the trees we uh, we extract and we cut, uh, making action of uh, water catchment to improve the uh, disponibility of uh, water in the soil in the uh, cambium complex of the soil. Create a creation of uh, uh, insect shelters, and also improve uh, through the installation of uh, box next in box. Uh, the possibilities of uh, breeding for some species that like uh, holes in the trunks, but the growing and the nature of this uh, uh, forest can offer, uh, for example, little owl and uh, Eurasian roller or uh, uh, Eurasian hoopoe. Uh, some complementary actions. This uh, is a bad land uh, patch of uh, of land in Alvelar territory near to, to Chiribel. Uh, in this uh, area, what uh, was uh, until the 70s, if my memory serves me well, was a query of uh, clay for tiles and uh, bricks. Obviously, this uh, promotes enormously the, the erosion of the, of the area, making it difficult to, to implant a vegetation layer because of the, the nature of the soil and because of the slope of the, the shore. But uh, making this action, making uh, uh, this uh, uh, hydric correction, what we have uh, reached is uh, this water catchment, the growing of a uh, uh, reed, uh, Fragmites australis uh, reed, that absorb uh, CO2 and the water and uh, improve enormously the, the biodiversity. Currently, this is a, a picture from uh, yesterday evening, and uh, the pond have been uh, filled with the rain of the, a couple of uh, weeks uh, ago. Obviously, we have continued uh, our work, and what we are going to, uh, to approach is a plantation of a spartu grass 
in these slopes through uh, the liberation of uh, directly the liberation of uh, seeds. And this uh, work, these rocks, what uh, uh, try to, to get is to reduce the water flow that uh, come from the upper part of the mountain, uh, putting water in, but also putting sediments uh, and with the risk of uh, uh, colmatation. Now, uh, the explanation I'm going to, to give uh, of some action we approach in, in some uh, public uh, lands, for example, the Cortijo del Conejo public, uh, public land, are uh, back up with uh, the analysis uh, and the cooperation with uh, some scientists and the papers that uh, are published that if you want or you need, uh, I can share with you, especially devoted in the check how the, the forest uh, communities and the uh, vegetation communities work in the semi-arid Mediterranean Sea Basin. I have to stop uh, sharing again. Uh, uh, oh, that is uh, okay. After an alteration, uh, after an alteration uh, under mm, human being forest management or a forest fire, everything uh, is uh, bare, or even after a cereal cropping everything is completely bare. Then, if we leave uh, uh, nature acting uh, alone, the first uh, step of colonization will be by grass uh, species or bush uh, species. In some areas, what happened was the Aleppo pine tree plantation in high densities were made, as I have uh, shown in the previous uh, slides. Uh, what happened with that? It's totally bad, no. But what happened is that as they grow, the canopies uh, reach a very high density, and many of them, many of them, uh, touch horizontally in a, a very high horizontal connectivity. This increases enormously the risk of uh, forest fire and reduce the biodiversity because of the lack of uh, sun radiation reaching the, the soil, avoid the growth of uh, grasses and, uh, and bushes. Also, this kind of uh, species, especially uh, Aleppo pine tree, need plenty of uh, sun radiation. If they don't receive that, what happens is uh, the lower branches die and uh, uh, remain die in the in the forest. That is a, as you can imagine, a, a risk of uh, of fire uh, impressive, and the reduction of biodiversity is uh, something very very relevant. The approach uh, of our action is in these cases not only plant trees or uh, make a plantation. First step would be remove some trees. Oh, sorry. Remove some trees to give the chance of these new trees to enlarge again the canopy. That is something that the uh, Aleppo pine tree uh, can do easily and permit the production of a bush layer, a, a soto bosque. Not sure how can uh, you translate that in English, sorry. Uh, plenty of different species that produce flower and produce uh, uh, seeds that can attract a community of new uh, uh, animals, a community of animals that will act as pollinators and will act as seeds dealer. That is uh, what I want to, uh, to reach. If we want to enlarge the potential of absorption of CO2 of this forest mass, uh, that is also describing uh, one of these uh, papers I mentioned, it. 
uh, we have to consider that uh, the plants fix CO2 after doing photosynthesis. To do photosynthesis, what they knew, uh, what they need is obviously uh, sun radiation. Is uh, also compulsory the presence in the in the soil of nutrients. I only put the, this three one because it's the the most uh, relevant, the most important: uh, potassium, nitrogen, and uh, phosphorus. The uh, presence of uh, CO two that uh, sadly nowadays is more than present is uh, an excess, and also the presence of uh, uh, water. Obviously, the water in these areas come from the rain. If the soil is not protected against the, the torrential episodes, the rain can go in the soil. And for that uh, reason, what happened is uh, erosion, run flow, and uh, uh, loss of uh, fertile soil, loss of uh, microorganisms, loss of uh, nutrients. These four elements are the same uh, uh, importance in this uh, process. If we don't have sun, obviously we can uh, make a photosynthesis. If we don't have uh, CO2, we don't have the, the carbon uh, source. But if we don't have uh, nutrients and funguses in the soil, and if we don't have water inside the, the cambium complex of the soil, we can produce new uh, organic matter. Then only plant trees is not enough to to fix CO2. What we have to do is to protect the soil and to increase the, the green coverture, but in some times and in some conditions, using grasses and using uh, uh, bushes. And that is something that sometimes some institution and some the donors don't understand properly, uh, maybe because of the because of the publicity uh, they need. Obviously, and considering all these uh, uh, conditions and aspects that we have mentioned, what we uh, uh, approach is the use of new technologies. We have done a, re a release of uh, uh, seeds, coated seeds, from the, uh, uh, the, the surrounding areas. Obviously, should be the same species and the uh, appropriate the species by drone. This is a very useful uh, technique, especially if you don't have uh, uh, access or, or logistical access for these uh, uh, slopey areas uh, that difficult the, the work of the, of the manpower. Uh, in this case, what we have to consider is the uh, survival rate of these uh, seeds can be uh, uh, very reduced, but the cost to cover large uh, surfaces with these uh, techniques is very uh, slow. If we can reproduce and repeat in the, the time, like uh, the nature uh, do, these uh, areas will uh, colonize and will cover with, uh, with bushes or, or trees in a compound of, uh, of gears. We also use uh, uh, different techniques uh, of uh, planting, like uh, cocoon that everybody know. This uh, uh, device is very, very useful and is uh, very effective, but uh, in cooperation with uh, the company, with Land Life and uh, Arno Tassiers and uh, other uh, uh, workmates of Arnaud, what we have to share is the difficulties of using these uh, devices in some areas them uh, should be uh, improved or should be used in the most appropriated and protected uh, uh, patches of land. And always, if we have the possibility of use exclusion fences, because what we have found is uh, the wild herbivores in these semi-arid areas, when the, we put uh, the water, go uh, remove the, the ground remove the, the tap and drink the water because it's uh, uh, the, the lack of water, the most uh, uh, limiting resources in this uh, area. Okay, then 
uh, we have detected some challenges. We have uh, uh, approached uh, some actions and expect uh, benefits and uh, uh, back result. What is the, the most difficult uh, thing or what is the, 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 the biggest difficulty we are uh, finding? People only uh, uh, are interested in planting trees and planting trees is only an, a year of the total uh, engine that is an ecosystem. It's very important, obviously, yes. But some actions of protection uh, the soil as the CO2 uh, second biggest uh, sink is not related with the uh, uh, trees plantation. And this is something that everybody should uh, take into account, especially if uh, as uh, every of us are involved in, in uh, restoration of landscape and uh, restore our our land. Last uh, uh, video I want to share is our dream or perspective for uh, 2050. El sueño de Alvelal es crear 50. un gran corredor verde para la biodiversidad. Y a través de la restauración de ecosistemas en suelos públicos y fincas privadas, conectar los espacios naturales protegidos de nuestro territorio. Esta restauración la realizamos a través de técnicas que convierten estos espacios en sumideros de carbono y espacios ideales para la biodiversidad, apoyando entre otras a las aves ceparias. La plantación de árboles, el semillado directo, el aporte de materia orgánica al suelo, el clareo para incrementar biodiversidad y prevenir incendios, las correcciones hídricas para prevenir erosión y la creación de puntos de agua para la fauna son las técnicas que desarrollamos para lograr una transformación de este territorio. Pasos que nos acercan cada vez más a lograr nuestro sueño, un corredor verde para la biodiversidad y un territorio saludable y lleno de vida. Well, thank you very much. I hope not to, to bore you in excess. And uh, if you have uh, any question, I will be glad to. Yeah. Thank you so much, Fernando. I mean, I think I've, I've looked at everybody's face every now and then I keep an eye on you, but I think everybody was sort of like really taking it in because it's a lot of, yeah, a lot of knowledge and experience and information, but also such a valuable, for me, expansion of um, the whole range of actions to take on the land. Of course, we, We've heard about them before, and many organizations are doing more things more broadly than just tree planting, but it's a good conversation to have with each other. And uh, I can imagine there were some questions about maybe some terms or, or concepts that were new to people. Or So I would also like to say there are no stupid questions. So please ask anything to Fernando. Uh, uh, go ahead. Tom, go ahead. Hi, Fernando. Thank you for your presentation. Hi, um, I have a, a question about the uh, selective extraction of pine trees uh, to boost uh, ecosystem restoration. So you were talking about uh, cutting down um, sick or unhealthy pine trees to then convert into organic matter uh, to put into the soil while also giving space for vegetation to, to flourish and uh, to boost biodiversity. But I was wondering, um, uh, well, do you have, uh, do you have plans to be doing this action soon? And um, w which kind of stakeholders would you be uh, doing this action with? Well, uh, obviously first uh, is uh, make a, a funding uh, uh, round because nobody is paying for good and trees, you know. And that is uh, our first uh, problem. Then what we have, uh, what we need is look or or, or find uh, institution that funds this uh, this action. After that, when we open in a semi-arid uh, area a forest like that, 
we have to make uh, a work, as uh, Villemain uh, explained uh, at the beginning, with the dwellers, especially with the shepherds, to try to respect uh, the new open areas. Because if you go in in a um, very intense presence of uh, shepherding, the effect will be negative instead of being positive. That is why we uh, approach the installation of, uh, of uh, uh, exclusion fences, temporary, to permit the growing of vegetation in gap of time of uh, uh, five uh, years, and to try to uh, move the ships to different areas more frequently than uh, nowadays. It's a holistic uh, work. I have uh, explained many things about natural area uh, restoration, but all of you know the the three zones model that we are going to to try to uh, impl uh, implement in the territory. You know, then another important aspect is in the surroundings of some uh, uh, restored areas, we have uh, farms and uh, almond orchards that. Even, even more important that this action is to try to make a, a regenerative management that allow the sheep going the, the almonds to reduce the pressure in the natural, uh, the pressure of grazing in the natural uh, areas, at least in some, uh, in some part. Then, respect uh, your, uh, regard your question, uh, the stakeholder is the shepherds uh, that uh, operate in the surroundings of the restoration areas. The farmers we have involved in our uh, partnered uh, nest and uh, uh, public institutions like rangers that uh, can cooperate with us and even they do uh, already cooperate to uh, uh, control and to uh, uh, vigilar, survey the uh, keeps under surveillance the the actions. Not sure if I have uh, give you an answer. Yes, you did. Thank you. Um, and yeah, I hadn't. I also hadn't considered um, just in your in the restoration and tree planting activities how much work it must be to uh, cooperate with shepherds because. I can imagine in a lot of your territory, there are huge areas of unfenced land um, where, where sheep can be walking across and nibbling on all of the, the, the trees that you've just recently planted. Um, so how often are you coming together with shepherds to talk about these issues? Until now, in every of uh, our action, we have uh, talked with uh, the shepherds in the surroundings and they respect uh, the works. Especially because uh, in some of the the action, what we have done is okay. Uh, you are going to see reduce your operation area, but in chains, what uh, we have done is uh, to contract uh, for the planting uh, activities, uh, uh, the wife of the shepherd or or the son of the shepherd to give uh, a co compensation of this uh, kind of uh, of uh, lost. I have to say that until now, this has been uh, very uh, respected by the shepherds, and even they give us a, a, a feedback of how the, the plants grow. You have to consider that uh, high dense uh, Aleppo, reforestation Aleppo uh, uh, forest, Aleppo pine tree forest, is not productive they don't produce anything uh, uh, rich for the for the ships. What we have doing is improve an ecosystem that produces uh, acorns, that produce uh, uh, soft leaves that in the future can be used uh, with more benefits by the separate. That is something that they respect. They demand uh, in some uh, areas. And we what we have uh, doing is that is Clear, uh, clarify the, the pines and to put more productive uh, uh, species. 
in the Del Cortifico as well. We have uh, uh, partners of us that uh, operate uh, with the ships uh, in this area. And what we have done is uh, to not to leave the, the flock uh, stay in the El Cortifico, only cross the, the area, only use as a, as a uh, track for the, for the ship's movement. And this uh, reduces enormously the, the pressure of crossing in the, in the plantation. And also, we tend to use some species. Some of them are not uh, uh, palatable, uh, rich for the for the, for example, Juniperus fenicia, Juniperus turifera, or Juniperus uh, oxycedrus. Uh, the the ships refuse to eat because it sometimes can provoke uh, uh, abortion of the of the lambs. Thanks. Good questions. Good, good conversations. And I, I think um, we're, we're almost nearing the hour. But I think if, if there's one takeaway that I would like to share and confirm with you, Fernando, is that um, what I understood from you, of course, each landscape has different soils and then different types of forests. And, and, and each forest brings a whole family of or a community of vegetation along with it. Uh, if, if it's a healthy forest, so you have shrubs, bushes, plants, herbs, uh, even flowers. Um, so it's not just the trees, it's, it's a whole community around it that you need to take into account. Um, it's uh, a whole community. For example, uh, when you uh, remove a forest in uh, Sierra de Baza or in Sierra Nevada, where uh, above uh, 1060 meters above the sea level the forest you can find there is a, a compound of uh, pinus silvestris um, quercus uh, pirenaica and uh, in some areas some quercus uh, uh, fagine kind of, uh, of uh, oaks this, uh, if you remove this kind of uh, forest, what is going to, to appear is a, a bush, uh, a bush uh, land, a, a bush community of Adenocarpus decorticans and uh, Thetisus uh, reverchoni, for example. This is not present in the high mountain of uh, Sierra de Maria because of the pH of the, of the soil is totally different. You never will find a uh, uh, Quercus pirenaica in Sierra de Maria because it's limestone. The pH is above uh, uh, eight. And that is uh, the consideration. Mm. For example, in the Sierra de Maria, in the upper part, what we can find is uh, Pinus nigra subsp uh, subspecies salfmani uh, joining with uh, uh, Quercus rotundifolia and joining with uh, the species uh, of bushes you have uh, seen. Ormatophila spinosa, Ormatophila uh, baetica, uh, Citisus escoparius, and so. If we move lower to a Mesomediterranean level, the forest is more or less the, the same. All moak uh, trees in the most uh, uh, humid uh, pieces of land maybe can appear, or cork trees in the in the soils with a lower uh, pH down to, to seven, you can find uh, uh, cork trees, uh, Quercus uh, ah, Quercus uber. You can find this uh, this tree, but you never will find Quercus uber in the in the Sierra de Maria, which is limestone. That is the the kind of consideration. Yeah. If this yeah. happens in the forest layer, imagine what happened in the sub uh, uh, steps down in the community of bushes and, and grasses. Many of these species selected the areas depending on the on the water, depending on the temperatures, depending on the pH of the of the soil. Yeah, super, and and and, and really appreciate you sharing your knowledge, uh, Fernando. And uh, I'm aware that you're going to go on a break. So I wish you uh, a, whole, a whole lot of fun with your family and hope you can enjoy uh, your holiday time. And I'm, I'm sure that if people have any future questions, they can reach out to you, but you will only respond after your holiday. 
Um, so thank you for sharing all your rich knowledge and experience, uh, Fernando. It's, it's a great lesson for us and uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you have any remaining questions, feel free to raise them. But uh, Fernando is going to be at a break and I, I wish him uh, lots of uh, good times. Thank you, everybody, to, to stay here and uh, move on because it's an effort that uh, should be should be done by everybody by every every sector and uh, and detecting the, the main challenge thank you so much muchas gracias thank you take care everyone Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.